Good morning. My name is Russell Evans, and I'm welcoming you to our 2022 annual webinar. I'm Vice President of Communications here at CAT and host of our in house podcast, Contributors. I'll be mod moderating our conversation this morning. We're looking forward to sharing some updates on our plan's performance. You'll also have an opportunity to hear from our senior leaders in an open Q&A. Before we get started, let's talk a little bit about how you can participate. On your screen, there's a box in the upper right-hand corner. This is your webinar control panel. There's also a separate link for ASL and for closed captioning, which will be available at the end of your GoToWebinar reminder email in your email box. If you need that, just take a minute and uh, find that link. During the webinar, you can ask a question or share a comment by typing your question into our questions box. Now I'd like to quickly pass it over to our lead of French language services, Chris Brophy, for a message about our session today. Bonjour à toutes et à tous et bienvenue au webinaire. La séance d'aujourd'hui sera animée en anglais, mais comme indiqué dans votre invitation, nous fournirons prochainement une transcription française du webinaire. Si vous souhaitez recevoir cette transcription, veuillez taper « Français » dans la boîte à questions et nous ferons un suivi avec vous une fois que la transcription sera prête. Back to you, Russell. Thanks so much, Chris. Before we get started, I'd like to conduct a quick poll with our audience. So I'd like to know, when you think about how Canada is evolving, what do you see as the top trend around workplace retirement savings programs? So our question to you is this. Over the past year, what have you seen as the biggest trend around work workplace retirement savings? Is it security, flexibility, value, or predictability? Lock in your answer now. Okay, interesting. So what came out loud and clear was the need for security. I also see flexibility there and uh, value and predictability also came up. So that's that's great to see. And I think we're gonna touch on all of those, which is some of the good news that we have for you. Right away, if I know that we're gonna, that your interest is in uh, security, I'll make sure that we get to that in our panel discussion. But before we do that, I wanted to talk a little bit about a trend that we've seen that's really shaped 2021 and will continue to shape 2022. When we meet with various individuals about the plan, whether it's CEOs, CFOs, CHROs, the thing that we hear most is a need for a retirement savings plan with flexibility. So flexibility is the first thing we want to talk about. Now more than ever, Canadians are looking for flexible workplaces, workplaces that are flexible in so many ways, but specifically workplaces that provide valuable, predictable, secure lifetime retirement income from an organization that they can trust. This is one of the reasons that we're so excited to talk about our, our progress around flexibility, specifically, we want to talk about DB Plus with Contribution Choice. Contribution Choice really brings together the best of defined benefit, defined contribution, and group RRSPs. It's a tailored solution that everyone can afford. Our panelists are going to talk a little bit more about Contribution Choice later, but before I introduce them, I wanted to talk a little bit about CAT's performance and how our flexibility, security, value, and predictability created our best year yet. So as I mentioned earlier, security continues to be at the forefront of the CAD plan. While we're evolving as a plan, we've remained strong and secure. When we talk to our members, they tell us that their CAT pension plan, whether they're contributing for a future or they're already receiving lifetime retirement income, has been monumental to their mental and financial health. Let's get into some of the numbers here. CAT is the only defined pension, plan, defined pension plan in Canada that is open to all workplaces, offering valuable pensions for employees at every stage of their careers. 
as of today, we have over 75,000 active and retired members. We've been able to expand DB coverage to 11 different industries. We're working with 211 participating employers, and we're extremely proud to be partnering with 17 union and member associations. This year alone, we welcomed over 100 new employers to the DB Plus plan. Our growth allows us to provide more benefit security to more members, which is always top of mind. From an employer's perspective, we're helping organizations win that race for talent by providing them with the opportunity to offer predictable lifetime retirement income as an insanely attractive employee benefit. Let's talk a little bit more about our numbers. As CAT's grown, we remain focused on keeping the plan strong and secure over the long term. Our in-house experts are committed to sound investment and risk management practices and protecting the pension that members have earned. We remain well positioned to stay resilient and sustainable over the years to come. I'll let Derek and Asif talk a little bit more about what this means, but overall, what we want you to know is that the plan is strong and performing well. At 124% funded, our approach uh, to long-term investing is really proving to position the plan as one of the fastest growing and sustainable in the country. Let's talk for a little, a little minute about governance. So our well-established joint governance model means that employees and employers have an equal voice in our plan's decisions. Our collective focus helps us deliver more value across, across both the employees and the employers that participate in the plan. It also helps us keep a, a pulse on the changing pension and workplace landscape. Let's hear what our stakeholders have to say about the plan. So in terms of trust, feedback shows us that both active and retired members have a very high degree of trust in their pension plan. Looking at governance, both uh, our employers and our employees, or sorry, both our employers and our members agree that their interests are well represented by our governance structure and by the CAT team. Growth beyond the plan, let's look at some of the internal and external growth we've seen over the last year. At CAT, we always put our members first. So in 2021, we launched two new portals, one for members called My Pension and one for employers called Pension Administrative Link or PAL. We also implemented member and employer experience committees, and this was really about further evolving the plan to meet our clients' needs. Finally, we launched a podcast to help our mission of making Canada better and to help us expand retirement security to more workplaces across the country. When we've spoken to our members and employers, one of the things they've told us is they want more Canadians to have access to what they have, a gold standard pension like CATS. So ultimately, the goal behind our podcast allows us to spread awareness of CAT and the importance of retirement security. With the Race for Talent at its peak, organizations are bringing retirement security to workplaces to provide employees with what they really want, but also to do it in a way that they can afford. Now, let me introduce our panelists. During our panel discussion, we'll explore how workplaces are transforming and evolving by offering retirement security. It's really a win-win-win for employees, for employers, and Canada overall. Here with me today, we have the CAT Pension Plan CEO and Plan Manager, Derek Dobson, our Chief uh, Investment Officer, Asif Hawk, and Vice President of Pension Solutions, Marnie Nimihood. Good morning, and thank you for being here with us today. So just reviewing some of the questions we've received, uh, the first question is really for Derek. Putting the numbers aside, Derek, how do you feel CAT is doing? Oh, sorry, Derek, uh, are you able to hear me? I think, Derek, uh, you may be on mute. There we go. Yeah, the un 
the unmute button was stuck. So my apologies, Russell. So in terms of how the plat is doing, you've already mentioned the great numbers. You've, you've mentioned uh, continuing to innovate, but I, I think it's also important uh, for the audience today. And, and first of all, I should say good morning and good afternoon to, to our friends across the country. Uh, but our plan is doing well on everything. Our, our, uh, we mentioned our portals, our service level standards, despite the amazing growth that we've had, continue to be met year over year. And also what hasn't been covered is, is our, our good governance structure. Uh, we have great policies to help support the growth of the plan across the country, as we now have members in every single province and we have to comply with all the benefits legislation. And also I should mention our great culture at CAT. So our engagement scores are very, very high. We have exceptionally talented team here at CAT, all aligned to our mission, vision, and purpose of delivering enhanced retirement security for more Canadians. So we're really hitting all cylinders, Russell, uh, across all of our uh, lines of business. So Derek, over the last two years, I think, one of the things we've seen is a lot of talk about whether you want to call it the boomer brain drain or uh, the great resignation, but I think there is a new level of interest in employee benefits and also in lifetime retirement income. Can you talk a little bit about what you've seen around that? Absolutely. And some of the employers and, and unions and other stakeholders might already be aware of this, but I think from the broader community, what I'm hearing more and more is pensions matter. And, and I'll add actually that good pensions matter. There's a lot of studies that have come out in the last two years, most recently a quarter ago, which showed that 62% of employers already feel that they uh, can't achieve their, their goals because of not being able to attract and retain key staff. And then we see on, on the, the good pension plan side, defined benefit pension plan side, that it is a cornerstone of attraction, retention, engagement. It also is aligning well to what the themes we're seeing about improving financial wellness and corporate social responsibility, et cetera. So pensions absolutely do matter. And given the demographics that we're facing as a country, it will continue to matter for, for decades to come. So not having a good pension plan really puts business goals at risk. Absolutely. And, and I think that's something that came up again and again on our first season of Contributors, right Right back to that first episode uh, where we talked to Paula um, in through, it was kind of the common thread. Um, can you talk a little bit more about other trends you've been hearing? Absolutely. So, so beyond the obvious trends that everybody's been talking about, attraction, retention, working from home, I'm also hearing from pockets about flexibility. And I think that's an important theme. And, and don't get me wrong, there, there's some who believe set it and forget it, same for all staff, and we can accomplish that. We have been accomplishing that. But we're also being asked to innovate to allow flexibility to meet the needs of specific workforces. Case in point, you've already mentioned DB Plus with contribution choice that recognizes that not all members are at the same stage of being able to save as much as they want for retirement. So that we're now allowing people who have different life cycles, whether it's raising a family, trying to save for a home, we allow them to table to tailor their their budget to match their desire. And then uh, as they come later in their career, when they probably have some more capacity, we're allowing past service purchases, we're allowing other innovations to allow them to catch up on the retirement savings goals. So flexibility isn't for everyone, but we're trying to reduce barriers and make our plan more accessible to more workplaces and more members. That's great. Let's talk a little bit about um, some of the misperceptions that exist around DB, but also around CAT. I know when I first uh, came to work at CAT, I was so proud to, to tell my friends and family about the plan. And one of the things I heard was, oh, defined benefit pensions. I, I think those are available, but only to government workers. Is that true, Russell? And I had to tackle that right from the beginning. What are, what are some of the misperceptions you're aware of? Yeah, so, so let's jump off on that one right away. So on accessibility, people absolutely believe that having a modern defined benefit plan uh, is not accessible. And as you're aware, Russell, and, and many of our audience is aware, we are now open to the private sector, not-for-profit sector, broader absolutely. public sector across uh, this entire great country. So. Good pension plans are absolutely available. 
I think the second misconception is that defined benefit plans are not sustainable. Absolutely not true. Through our joint governance structure, through our funding policies, our long-term focus, and the good regulatory regime we have here in Canada, all support that our plan is absolutely sustainable. I believe probably one, if not the most sustainable pension plan in Canada, delivering high value uh, for members uh, as well. Perfect, thanks, Derek. I mean, I have some more questions for you later, but now I'm gonna turn it to Asif. Good morning, Asif. Good morning, Russell, and good morning, everyone else. How are you? Great, so lots of questions for you. Uh, you're definitely gonna be in the hot seat. And I think one of the commonalities that I've seen is really uh, what's our investment strategy? So, uh, you know, up at a thousand feet, what are we trying to achieve with the uh, CAD investment team? Sure, uh, happy to try to tackle that. The, the key goal of the investment program um, is to deliver investment performance over the long term to keep the plan secure. The, the 10 year numbers that you were showing um, just a moment ago um, is a testament to that. We're, we're proud of the numbers we've been able to achieve and the results in the investment program have helped keep the plan sustainable and make it more sustainable over time. You know, at the highest level, I would say we, we think long term in everything we do here at CAT and we have a long term uh, perspective with regards to the investment program. So what does that mean concretely? Um, significant allocations to uh, longer term investments in private markets so private equity real estate infrastructure areas like that where um, we expect um, solid steady performance over the long term and where we think management of companies and of projects have more of a long-term perspective in their thinking um, even within our public market allocations we have meaningful allocations to areas that are a little bit more long-term focused where volatility in the short term may be a little higher but where we expect um, uh, better returns over the long run over the long run i think at the highest level russell that's that's what i would say about the investment strategy long-term and focused with the goal of keeping the plan secure perfect and and what does that mean what does our investment strategy mean for our members and employers I come back to that notion of uh, benefit security, I would say, Russell, that you know, benefits can't be reduced, but as the investment program continues to deliver, if we can continue to deliver, uh, there's a, the, the plan will be more secure and we have the ability to enhance benefits and down the road. So the plan is extremely strong. Um, one of the questions we got was, why is it so strong and, and how is it that CAT's performance has tracked so well over the long term? Uh, effectively, I think uh, the questioner is saying, what's your secret? <laughs> I don't know that there's a secret so much, but other than uh, a lot of hard work, we have an extremely dedicated, very, very knowledgeable team here across our public and private markets um, asset classes. Um, we also have just a great group of external partners that we work with across again both the public and the private markets and we've had an asset mix that has been that has worked very well for the market environment that we all of us experienced from the end of the global financial crisis through through to now and that served us very well that led to the markets themselves would have probably given us about nine percent per year over the last 10 and the, the hard work of our team and our external partners has led to a performance of close to 2% per year over uh, what the markets have done. And we're, we're extremely proud of it, but um, not much of a secret to it. It's just a lot of hard work and a, um, um, a willingness to accept some new ideas and, and build great relationships and, and get great new ideas in to, to, to think about and act on. I, that's really helpful. I think I would also say one of the things that that I've seen working here is is just how talented the investment team is. You you kind of got the torch from Julie, who was such an amazing leader, and uh, I think you're doing an amazing job. But then you also have such a such a talented team behind you. Yeah, I'm, and a huge shout out to to Kevin Fahey, who runs our private markets, and Hager Osman, Adam Buzanis, um, his leaders on the private side. Razvan Tanay and Kathleen Pabla on the public market side, everybody on the team 
working really hard and bringing lots of great ideas every day. Perfect, thank you, Asif. Uh, now I'm gonna uh, I have a couple of questions for Marnie. Marnie, if you can turn your camera on. So for those of you that don't know Marnie, Marnie is, is the woman behind our growth. She has done an exceptional job of getting out there, spreading the word about CAT. And uh, again, I guess my question to you, Marnie, would be, uh, how do you do it? Tell us, uh, tell us about the last year. Well, thank you, Russell, for the question. And good morning, everyone from coast to coast to coast. So happy to have you with us this morning. Uh, in 2021, our membership grew to over 75,000 members and reached over 200 employers. Uh, what, what we heard over the past year uh, was that employers were talking to each other about the advantages of DB+. And as a result, we've been seeing more and more employers actively reaching out to us wanting more solutions to show their employees that they care about them both today and in the future. We're hearing from HR leaders that offering a more valuable and secure pension like DB Plus can improve recruiting and retention while taking financial stress off of their employees' minds. So DB Plus is fast becoming the industry standard in, in several sectors of the economy, uh, really the plan of choice. Um, from the employee perspective, these have been incredibly uncertain times. Employees are burnt out, and what we're hearing from them is that they want security and assurances that their pension is safe and secure with a big plan like CAD. So they can rest easy and focus on what matters to them, knowing that they can leave the pension planning up to the experts at CAD. For many new members that I've spoken with over the past year, CAT's value and security has really been a, a beacon of light in some dark times. I think that's great. I think, uh, you know, we, we've talked earlier with Derek about the, the great resignation. Are you seeing new plan employers coming to CAT specifically because they, they think the plan can win the war on talent? Absolutely, you know, whether it's uh, a, a national business organization like the Conference Board of Canada or a manufacturing employer like uh, Jameson Vitamins uh, down in Windsor, the reasons, the business reasons an employer may have for joining are as, as varied as the employers themselves. But I would say it's primarily because they see considerable value in offering a DB plan in order to attract and retain top talent, which what we're seeing in the labor market as it's tightening up, this is one of the top issues facing Canadian businesses today. Uh, we're hearing from those employers that having a DB plan, being able to say that in their job postings, definitely helping in this tight labor market with the additional advantage for the employer of no financial risk or heavy administrative burdens. That, that gives me uh, a perfect opening for the next question. So one of the questions we have in the chat is around what's actually involved. So I think uh, a lot of employers assume changing retirement plans must be a, a huge lift, must be a really, must be a lot of work, a lot of paperwork. Um, just how easy or, or difficult is it to join the CAD plan, Marty? Well, it's very easy to join. I think employers might be worried that a big old plan like CAT that's been around for more than 50 years could be old fashioned or inflexible in our administrative approaches, but it couldn't be further from the truth. It's really easy to join and the transition uh, onto the CAT platform is really efficient and quite simple. Uh, the way DB Plus is structured with fixed contributions. This really does appeal to employers who already offer a defined contribution plan or RSPs because they're effectively able to just lift and shift that existing pension arrangement over to yeah. CAT. And that keeps their accounting expenses and tax treatment as is. So they like that uh, while providing much more value. Uh, so we can accommodate virtually any retirement arrangement that's in the workplace today. Uh, as far as the actual, the transition part, we have a team of dedicated expert project managers 
who provide support for all of our onboarding employers, making it really easy for them to transition to a fully outsourced pension administration. We also see that this is what employers who want to de-risk a DB plan are looking for as well. They're looking for the cost certainty that DB Plus offers and that full outsourcing everything over to CAT. So what we're seeing is a win-win for employers and members. Perfect, that's really helpful, Marty. Um, I've got another question for you, which is uh, not a question in the chat, but a question that I get all the time when I talk to people, which is, why is CAT growing the plan? Nobody else is, is doing this. The other big public pension plans are not opening their doors to other employers. Why is CAT doing this? Well, it's the right thing to do, for starters. Um, you know, there is a pension crisis in Canada. Uh, it's about the lack of access and coverage by more workers uh, to defined benefit plans, that kind of pension certainty and security. Uh, you know, there's millions of Canadians that don't have anything close. Uh, so we know here at the CAP plan that we can open our plan and we have a design that's really unique that allows employers and members to participate and expand DB coverage across the country to the private sector, not-for-profit, uh, broader public sector as well. So uh, it's the right thing to do for Canadians, uh, as well as the right thing for our plan. It helps us diversify our membership as well. Amazing. Thanks for that, Marnie. Uh, I would like to invite Asif back. We've got a couple more questions for you, Asif. Great. Hello again. Hello again. So a, a number of questions coming in asking about responsible investing. Can you talk a little bit about uh, how CAD approaches that at a high level? Sure. And this discussed earlier, Russell, which is that discussed earlier, Russell, which is that long-term approach. Um, you know, we think about investment returns and investment success over the long term, and that means thinking about investment risks over the long term as well. And we truly believe that risks related to environmental, social, and governance factors are real financial risks that need to be thought about carefully and dealt with um, over the long term. Um, we are signatories to the United Nations Principles for Responsible Investing, and we try very hard, everybody in the team and with our external partners, uh, to work towards those principles every day and what we do. Perfect. Uh, a follow-up here. So. Uh, one of our participants has gone through our annual report, that longer version, and uh, has seen something in there about TCFD, the Task Force on Climate-Related Financial Disclosures. Can you share a little bit more about that and, and what CAT's involvement in that is? Sure. And before I do that, maybe just a, a quick plug for the annual report itself that with regards to responsible investing specifically, um, our annual report and our website uh, go into quite a bit of detail on our responsible investing policy and some of the groups that we collaborate with and work with. TCFD is one of them. You know, with regards to climate change, it's very hard to manage something that you can't measure well. Um, and understanding the amount of carbon emission in your portfolio is is difficult because there's not a lot of of standardized data that comes out from companies in which we might invest. And so TCFD um, was, was brought in place by the Financial Stability Board a number of years ago. And the idea is that using the, the standards that TCFD is, is uh, proposing, companies will slowly be able to and, and should uh, make disclose publicly carbon-related information about their activities, but in a standardized, accurate way so that investors can understand the impact of these investments in their portfolios from a carbon perspective, and then be able to take the proper steps in terms of climate mitigation strategy, but based on real data and good data in the future. Uh, so we, the CAT Pension Plan, have endorsed the recommendations of TCFD, and we are starting our own journey towards uh, implementing all of their recommendations at the plan ourselves. Excellent. That's helpful. Thank you. So number of questions here around kind of 
where we are today from an investment perspective is really positive. It's enviable, but we're, 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 you know, it appears like we're going into a period that might be even more challenging, whether it's, you know, market upheaval, whether it's inflation, um, you know, they, they, they like to say what, what got you there won't, 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 you know, what got you here may not get you there. So I think my, I might phrase it as 10 year performance is great. How are you feeling about the next 10 years? Yeah, and I, it's a, it's a preoccupying question. I would say that we are we are optimistic, we are cautious for all the reasons that you mentioned. We we absolutely agree that the next 10 years may look quite different from an economic perspective, from geo geopolitical perspective, and from a market perspective than the last 10 years did. Uh, but we're starting from a good place. I think that's uh, a very important thing. The plan is secure that 124% funded status you mentioned, the $4 billion in reserves. We're starting from a very good position as we enter potentially a different market environment. Our asset mix, um, we continue to have that long-term focus and we have meaningful allocations in our asset mix to uh, investments that um, are, are tailored to do well in the environment that we think we might be going into in terms of higher inflation over the long term or an increasing interest rate environment um, and most importantly again we, we pivot back to the team and to our external partners we're talking about these issues all the time we're debating we're discussing what could what could happen what could go wrong where we could be wrong and how to mitigate those risks over time so it's uh, we're optimistic about it because of the uh, the team we have and the and the debates and discussions we have but it's definitely going to be a challenging time but we're we're uh, we're up for it. Thank you, awesome. Uh, back to Derek. So Derek, I think that there is a, kind of a natural follow-up question to some of what I just asked, Asif. So we talked about climate, which is really the the E, but there's more to that. So uh, how is Cat approaching kind of the rest of responsible investing? So I guess I would say the S and the G. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So, so, so beyond what Asif is talking about, I'll, I'll talk about it more from the, how the pension plan actually fits into Perfect. ESG, uh, leaving the ES side. But on the S side, that stands for social, for those of people who aren't familiar with that acronym. And there's a lot of studies coming out, including from our sister plans across Canada, about how uh, secure defined benefit plans actually provide a social good. Uh, defined benefit members uh, have a higher um, value in life, like they enjoy life more, they volunteer more. Uh, in fact, I've, I've heard in one of our private equity investors that they actually look at investing in communities that have DB pensioners because there is that stability. So it absolutely does tie to the social good of Canada to deliver pensions. And there's another study that came out uh, this year about the economic value of pensions as well, how it's a driver for uh, small businesses. It supports rural and urban communities. So uh, good pension plans are absolutely the lifeblood of, of many communities across Canada. So it absolutely is a social good in many areas beyond what it does uh, from an investment uh, economic development perspective. So that's very strong. On the G side, on the governance side, I think CAT demonstrates its own good governance with having all key stakeholders at the table, so our member representatives, our employer representatives, also our, our interaction with regulators and legislators across the country of, of making sure that all key stakeholders have a voice in our pension plan. And, and that is demonstrated in the policies that we've approved uh, at our board and sponsors committee of allowing our governance structure to open up to new industries, new employers that you yeah. and Marnie have talked about before. So we're, we're big believers in good governance as well and uh and and are happy with our path and and a lot of our best ideas come from either or both sides of the the, the table thank you for that uh, i see another follow-up question on inflation inflation is the hot topic of the day obviously so um how do you feel the plan is positioned for a high inflationary environment Yes, you're absolutely right. I, I, almost every conversation I have across this country usually gets to inflation or flexibility or security at, at some point in that conversation. 
and maybe the questioner has has two different views. So, so from a plan health perspective, we're well positioned. We do numerous amounts of stress testing on the plan, and in a high inflationary environment, the plan continues to be very well funded. But the question might also come from the member perspective of uh, can we? Uh, so let me let me just get to the point. Our plan designs have inflation protection enhancements built in. It's the first priority of our surplus and our funding policy because what's important to retirement security is that you're actually protecting the purchasing power of the pension. And right now, the average Canadian retiring at, let's call it 62, is gonna live till age 90. That's 28 years. Even at yeah. 2% inflation, that's massive erosion of purchasing power unless you have inflation protection. So getting back to that joint governance structure, having members at the table, having employers at the table, and knowing that members need inflation protection in retirement is absolutely critical. And, and, and the last thing I'll mention is we do annual surveys of our members and having inflation protection, having that security around keeping pace with inflation is a fundamental benefit that all of our members enjoy. So for employers out there, that's an essential design element. And for members out there, high inflationary environments know that your pension will increase with inflation. Thank you for that. So next question is a real kind of nuts and bolts question in terms of how the plan works. So if if you know if the questioner was to join the plan, could their individual employees actually decide how much they want to put in? Is that how is it like is that flexibility actually built in or or do they have to make that decision for everyone? Yeah, so, so in short, we can do anything. Uh, our board and our sponsors committee have said, let's reduce the barriers or, and, and also let's make change management easy. So for example, maybe the questioner is part of a union and they have a collective bargaining agreement and maybe it's 4% member, 4% employer, but if the employee puts in another one, the employer puts in another two, this is exactly what CAT can do with contribution choice. Uh, we allow contribution phase in so if they're going from no workplace pension plan today and they want to get to let's say three percent employee five percent employer we will allow them to phase into that ultimate rate so really we have not come across any contribution schedule that cat can't adopt uh, our board and our sponsors have said let's make pension coverage easier and let's remove the barriers and contribution flexibility is absolutely part of that equation Thank you for that, Derek. Uh, more questions about contribution choice, but I think they are Marnie questions. So Marnie, if you're able to rejoin us on camera. Thank you, Russell. Happy to uh, happy to answer questions about this. So you're, you're not showing up on camera for whatever reason. So if we can see what it's we can do about that. Well, I, uh, let me just, phrase the question while we're here. Okay. So uh, it says my camera's on. Who's to say? All right. So uh, effectively the question that we received around contribution choice is, what kind of pickup is CAT seeing on this? What are they hearing from employer and member groups around contribution choice? And uh, are, are employers eager to take advantage of this? Yeah, absolutely. They are eager to take advantage of it. Um, with uh, the kinds of first principles that Derek talked about, that fundamental first priority to protect pensioners uh, in, like in their retirement and, and preserve that purchasing power. Um, we all agree that that's the most important thing, but how you get there really varies from employer to employer, workplace to workplace. And so we've structured DB plus and now DB plus with contribution choice to provide more opportunities for more Canadians to have that pensioner protection in retirement that they're looking for um, while providing almost every workplace retirement arrangement to be able to lift and shift as, uh, as was mentioned earlier. So this impact, as I said before, it's unmatched. It gives that improved attraction and retention and increased productivity and fully outsourced pension administration. So as, as Derek spoke a moment ago uh, with regards to a phase in of contribution rates, for example, uh, affordability uh, in large metropolitan centers uh, can sometimes be a challenge. 
And if the employees are currently paying 3% into a group RSP and the employer's paying five, um, and the employees would like to get to the point where they're paying 5%, you know, they could do 3% this year, 4% the next year, 5% uh, the year after that. So having that kind of flexibility is really important. Uh, the other uh, aspect, as, as Derek mentioned briefly a moment ago, was about contribution choice. So that essentially would allow an employer that has, let's say, for example, a 4% and 4% matching contribution rate across the whole workplace. It would also allow an individual member, let's say, if the employer wanted to, uh, to offer this, that individual member could opt in to pay an additional 1% and the employer could then match that. So this is a really unique offering uh, in the in the defined benefit space. That's really interesting. Um, so I think a, a follow-up question that I would have around that. Oh, you're back, Barney. Oh, great. Awesome. <laughs> so uh, a follow-up question that that I would have for that, which uh, is also something that was submitted in the chat, is. Is it the case that employers have to match employee contributions or you or can you get to a place where I don't know what you would call like maybe asymmetrical contributions, but but basically the idea being that times are, are tight for a lot of Canadians and they may not be able to match the contribution being made by employers. Is, is that is that acceptable within the cap plan? Yes, absolutely. It is. Uh, our plan was initially devised around equal shared matching contributions. Um, but ultimately we abide by, you know, the income tax act and the maximums there. And the maximum in the income tax act is 18% uh, of earnings. So that's the ceiling, if you will. And yep. we also abide by the pension benefits act, uh, which requires that the employer, uh, well, the employee can't pay more than half the cost of the benefits. So essentially, as long as the employer at least matches, but could pay more, as long as the total is no more than 18%. Okay, perfect. That's really helpful. Thank you. Uh, Want to be respectful of everyone's time. We're almost out of time. So I'm going to say goodbye to Marnie and one final question for Derek. So Derek, my, my final question for you would be, it sounds like there has been a lot of change over 2021. Here we are, you know, almost halfway through 2022. What's next for CAT? So I think I'll reflect on our new 2040 strategy. Essentially what's new for CAT is that we're listening. We're listening to what employees need. We're listening to what employers need. And we're also listening to what Canada needs. And that's a more robust, more valuable, secure pension scheme in Canada. So we're going to continue to drive innovation. And we are, right now, we're doing market research uh, with uh, employers and members across Canada to say, how can we continue to innovate to make your situation better? And that's what we're really about, is expanding pension coverage, good pension coverage. And then we're taking those ideas and then working with regulators, working with legislators to say, okay, this is a noble goal of making Canada better through uh, improved retirement income security. So really what's next for CAT is watch this space is what I might say is we're listening and we're innovating and we're advocating for what's best for Canada members and employers. Absolutely, thank you for that. So uh, I wanna say thank you to Derek and Asif and Marnie for being here with us today. I also wanna say, Thank you to all of you for your attendance and participation. Before you go, we have one last ask of you, which is uh, a poll question. So the question is, how valuable did you find today's conversation? Uh, select anywhere between not valuable to extremely valuable. And one last note for me is, uh, if you didn't get your question answered or you didn't get a chance to ask a question, you can still ask that in the question box right now. And if you submitted a question that didn't get answered, we will be getting back to you via email and providing you with uh, an answer to each and every question that you have. So thank you so much for uh, your time and attendance today and have a wonderful day.